Welcome to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Ryan Van Fleet. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So, grouper season 2021 is underway. So, last week, uh, Victor and Brooke from Land Shark Outdoors and uh, Brooke Christ Outdoors were with me grouper fishing. And we made a, 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 they made a hell of a video. Now, we didn't leave the dock until probably about 11 o'clock. And our, our plan was just to go out in the afternoon and, you know, look for some groupers, some mutton snappers, uh, whatever else would bite on the bottom. So uh, to keep it pretty simple, in other words. So uh, they, they've been extremely busy. They filmed with Nick Stanzik the previous day. They caught some beast-sized mahi. They caught a big triple tail. And that video is out. So... And then, um, you know, the hook and cook is always, always awesome. And what I really, really enjoy about watching their videos is that there's just a lot of family involved and it's cool to see the relationship that Brooke has with her dad and her mom. And Brooke's dad is an Adam is loves to mutton fish. (laughs) So that's his favorite, that's his favorite fish. So he's just, it's just a fun, they're just very authentic people and, I really respect that because it's in this day and age, you just don't know. So when I watch their videos, uh, then they're really the only ones I watch because they are truly who they are and they are extremely good fishermen, extremely good, uh, both Brooke and Victor. So last year when we filmed, it was a challenge. We spent probably about a good 13 hours on the water and the pre- the previous day, I had uh, crushed it. I mean, I, I crushed it. We caught groupers, we caught mutton snappers, and we caught big mangrove snappers. So I just knew I was in for some trouble. <laughs> so the the next day when we filmed, I had no current. I had sharks. It was just it was just bad. My my anchor broke. Uh, I can't even begin to tell you all the the hurdles that I went through to catch what I did. And then they hung in there, and then we I was able to get some big muttons dialed in at the end of the trip, and the fish bit really nice, and it, we they we had a hell of a good time. So it's and then what was what bothered me was was that Brooke uh, had was looking for a black grouper, and she had hooked a couple, and the sharks got them. And I felt so bad. So she didn't catch one. Uh, Victor caught one, but Brooke didn't. So I told her that we would get one. I would definitely, definitely next year was going to be her year. So I'm not going to like give away what happens in the video, but I have to say it was a great trip. So we targeted, like I said, I left at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, and we spent maybe five, six, spent about six hours of fishing at anchor. And I, Saved some tips that I wanted to, you know, drop in that video this year for groupers that I haven't talked about in the podcast yet. So one of the tips I talk about is what I call the mutton biscuit, the grouper biscuit, and you're going to see that one, and you're going to see the success that Brooke and Victor have using that bait, and it's this little special bait that I call the biscuit, and so you'll get to see that in the in the video and you'll get to see some different types of ways i attach weights other than the balloon fisher king clips that some of you guys may uh that some of you guys may want to use or try if you're if you don't like the balloon fisher king clips there's another way that you can do that and i believe that's going to be shown in the video as well uh i talk a lot about leader length and then i talk about chumming i am obsessed with chum i have like i'm sorry but I am one of those guys. I like to make a mess. I like to get shit dirty. I love the chum. I love the process. It goes back to when I was a kid, when I was sitting my dad with my dad and my grandfather on the Mississippi River with no tea top and a hundred degree weather in an aluminum boat, um, fishing with stink bait. And the stink bait would get all over the boat. It would reek. It would stink. But we still sat there all day long, and with no SPF shirts or fancy gear. And we just chilled out and we caught fish. So, and we stayed there all day. And it was just, sometimes it was just an excuse to stay out and, <laughs> and hang out on the water. And, and it would just, my grandfather was obsessed with making stink bait in the garage. He would come up with these recipes. He'd use a lot of blueberries, raspberries, 
Uh, he was uh, like a wizard in the, and I think that's that's basically where I got a lot of my was a lot of my stuff was from him and what he used to do with a lot of stink bait with binders and and stuff in the garage and how he held it onto the <laughs> the rubber worms and it was just fascinating to me and about how he did it and it was it was just a fun memory that I had of my grandfather and I'll never forget that so I really love the chum a lot of guys hate it they don't like to get their boats dirty and i hear stories of from other guests that have been on my charters that they'll get on a boat now you know if it's fishing slow and the captain doesn't have a plan they go yellow tell fishing and then he'll tell the client told one of my clients is that this boat doesn't carry chum because it's it's a mess and it's a redneck sport so when i heard that i was like you guys don't have to worry about that with me if you want to do some bottom fishing i'll have some chum so but Sometimes I don't have it. It just depends on the stock and chum. You know, nowadays it can be hard to get uh, with all the shutdowns of the, uh, all the different men Hayden shutdowns, all the different netting shutdowns. There's a lot of things that go into that industry that just it just doesn't grow on trees. In other words, so see, I like to talk a little bit about chum. <laughs> so, but I talk about something special I do with a block to get fish there quicker. Um, I talk, like I said, I talk about leader length. Um, yeah, then I talk about a, a, some science behind why I do what I do as far as why I sit, um, uh, and, and why I'm patient. So, and that's something that I go over with my clients on, on, on the boat too. So, um, there's just a lot more to it and you really got to have some patience. So that's why I design my charters the way I do. And because I want people to have a good experience, that's why I provide the gear that I do because it does take specific types of gear to get fish off the bottom and uh, fish eat differently now. Bait fish are eating like weird out there. They're highly pressured. Uh, For example, last night, man, it's a new moon. There's supposed to be lots of bait out there. There's not much. The ballyhoo is kind of like weird. Uh, The speedos aren't coming to the boat as much. So I'm having to use different techniques to catch speedos. Uh, one, one way that, you know, one thing that you guys can do to catch, um, multiple ballyhoo is that you can cut off every other sabiki. You can flow back a sabiki and catch, you know, multiple ballyhoos with one hook, but you got to like trim your, um, every other sabiki off so you don't get a tangled mess. That's something you can do. You can also catch the speedos with sabikis too. Now in the video, I shared a couple tips on, on speedos. So I'm not going to give away. A lot of stuff because I want you guys to watch the video again. It's going to be on Land Shark Outdoors, and there's one video on there, and there's one video with Brooke Christ, and they do at the afterwards they're going to do a hook and cook, and they show you how to clean the mutton snapper and, and all that good stuff. But um, it's good. I shared I shared some stuff in there that I wanted to share for my listeners that um, that have been following me, and as a thank you, so I dropped that. That's why I did what I did. Now, there's a lot of a lot of things that I do not share. So, and what I'm willing to share, I share in the podcast. So, I just want to let you guys know that. But I, I felt comfortable with sharing that for the people that follow me, and hope that helps you out. So, I'm sure that that's there. You're going to see it all over the internet now, which is how it goes. And one thing I've learned is that if I don't want it, if you don't want something out there, don't share it. Don't share it. So that's something that's what, so what I did was, yeah, you know, I was willing to share the tips that I did. Oh, you get to see how I rigged the, the, my pilchards. So I did have some pilchards there that day. I talk about my strategy with a little bit of dead bait and live bait. So there's something else that I do. And, and we talk about fishing some ledges. So it's for me guys, it's not about like catching limits of fish. Okay. It's not because I, you have to keep the fish populations healthy. And if you guys think that there's like thousands of mutton snappers swimming out there and there's lots of fish, you guys are mistaken. So it's not how it works out there. And if you, I, what I'm seeing is I'm seeing guys still hammering spots and hammering spots. And I'm like, oh, boy. So some of the wrecks out there are just wrecked uh, because it's, it's easy for you just to go out there and just fish a spot. So I just tell people you just need to find your own areas. In my spot finding course, I give you the golden nugget, the golden nugget to finding deep water spots, okay? Now, you do have to put in some work, and that's up to you guys, but if if you're willing to put in that work, 
to find that nugget that I gave you guys, then you're going to find then you're going to find those spots that you want to fish. So I'm just just telling you. So it's in the spot finding course uh, at my uh, in my um, tackle store, and that's um, goodkarmafishingtackle.com. So uh, what else am I going to talk about? Yeah, that's kind of it. I wanted to give you guys a little preview and get you excited to watch that video. It'll probably be released here pretty soon. Oh, one more thing, trolling groupers. Uh, I'm getting seeing a lot of questions in my Facebook forum about leader length and planer length and stuff. Guys, my best advice to you is you got to try try new things. Here's the ticket. You do one short and one long. If you're not getting bit on a short, you need to go longer, okay? Uh, I would go 175 foot back, honestly, on your long planer, and then come in half of 175 on your short. Okay, you got to find out what's getting bit. Meaning that if your short keeps getting bit, then you're good. But if your long's getting bit, not your short, then you know. So if you're not getting bit, and then you need to go longer. Okay, that's just the uh, the rule of thumb. So you have to try that. And as far as your uh, honestly, man, you need to like. As far as your planer size goes, you need to go up to like size eights. Okay, you need to get some custom, you know, some 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 hefty rods if you want to go deeper. Okay, so that's just FYI. I'm seeing the charter boat guys out there now. They're trolling LP reels with big planers. I don't have any plans to do that, but that's what's being done now. A lot of really heavy F LPs with um, bigger planers getting deep. They're working anywhere between like 40 foot out to 120, out to 140 to get those planers down. Like I said, the trick to do that is to to get a bay deeper is to run a heavy heavier stout rod and then run a um, a plug off of it. So that's just and then the best plug to run is a lighter plug, and that's the Halco. It won't trip your um, planer. It runs perfect deep, and it'll dive it'll dive about twenty to thirty feet extra. So, or you can run the um, the other standard is to run an Islander lure with a with a um, an Islander lure with a rig ballyhoo. That works very well. A double rig ballyhoo behind there, and then the old standard is this is the this is an old lure that guys probably don't know about, but it's an old C and H lure. It is the 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 first lure here. Here's your nugget for today. It's something I haven't talked about, and I used to have all these. They don't carry them at Bass Pro anymore. They got to be a pain in the ass, but it's the old it's the old standard um, C and H lure, and this is what you need. And this is if it's an ugly looking feather. It's the no alibi trolling feather, and it's a you got to buy the twelve ounce, the three hundred forty gram head, and the sixteen ounce. 340 gram head or i'm sorry the 16 ounce 453 gram head okay the black and red okay the black and red i don't like anything else um as far as with those lures and i've i caught so many wahoo on that bait and basically it's just an ugly looking feather um the damn dye on that feather you can get um the dye like wears off on it too it just like ugh, I just don't like it um, as far as it, what it did to my tackle and stuff. But it produced okay, and that's a local that's a local lure. I mean, it's something that a lot of guys use and and stuff. But that's what those guys, what a lot of guys use for trolling for grouper, and they skirt that over um, they skirt that over a ballyhoo or a big piece of. Um, Bonita meat, like a like bonita meat works great for trolling groupers. They like that. Um, a belly of some sort, like um, you know, you can rig the speedo to troll for. Um, you can rig that to troll, and that's something that I am going to teach in my in my rigging crew is how I rig um, speedos and different different um, rigging stuff. So that's something that I'm going to cover this this year. So, um, but yeah. So that's all I got for today, guys. Gave you a little nugget uh, as far as what you get. And don't you're gonna laugh at me with that trolling feather, but shit, man, go ahead and laugh. The guys that are actually that are gonna apply it are gonna crush. Okay, they're gonna catch fish. It's used down here by some of the old time charter boat guys, so they're still using it to this day. So you can add a little orange skirt underneath that. And, um, that again, underneath that black and red feather. 
Uh, I mean, I don't use them anymore because I got so much so much shit, and I don't troll for grouper. But that's what guys use rather than buying those damn Nomad heads. <laughs> the Nomad, here we go again. Nomad. That's all I got for today, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram, see what we're catching. Right now we're just grouper fishing, really, catching some bycatch of porgies <laughs> and some muttons. Yeah, whatever. It's a lot, a lot of fun. I just want to thank my clients that have fished with me over the past couple of weeks. You guys have been you guys have been great. And most of the guys that have fished with me are, are are podcast listeners and I really appreciate that. So the new folks. So thank you guys and I can't wait to have you back. Uh, congratulations on catching those monster groupers. Um, th- th- those groupers went to good homes. So appreciate you guys bringing the good karma, bringing the patience, understanding my fishing philosophies, and just overall being good people. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Makes my job so much easier, and, and it's good to see people really enjoying being out there. So thank you. Instagram, good karma sport fishing underscore FL underscore keys. You can check out my website from time to time, good karma sport And my tackle store, you can buy some courses in there, tune up a bit, and get those nuggets. Good karma fishing tackle.com. Don't forget, Brooke Christ and, and Land Shark video coming out. Gonna be good. You're gonna learn some shit. Thanks for listening, and remember, anytime you're fishing, it's all good.